Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we will dive into the world of AWS CloudFront, which is one of the key players in uh, content delivery. So whether you are preparing for an interview or you're simply eager to boost your uh, AWS knowledge, then you're in the right place. Now in this session, we will look at 10 common uh, interview questions that you can expect as part of your uh, CloudFront uh, service. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that uh, subscribe button. So let's uh, kick things off with the basics. So basically, what is your CloudFront? So CloudFront, it's a content delivery uh, network. So it's a CDN service that we have in AWS. So CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. And uh, this is designed to supercharge the performance of your websites and your application. So mainly improving the performance of your websites or any applications, we can make use of this uh, service. So now let's delve into some of the common questions that you can expect as part of the service. So the first question we have is, what is AWS CloudFront? So like I said, CloudFront, it's your uh, CDN service that we have in AWS. So CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. So we can make use of this service to securely uh, deliver your data, any videos, any applications and APIs to your customers, which can be present globally. And all of this can be achieved with low latency and high transfer speed. So basically, if you want to make your uh, application highly available, if you want to make your data highly available and you want to deliver this data securely, we can make use of your CloudFront service for that. So that's basically what your CloudFront service is. So it's your content delivery network. So any content that you want to deliver over a network, we can make use of this CloudFront service. Moving on to the next question. So how does CloudFront enhance the performance of a website or an application? So uh, CloudFront, it improves the performance of your applications by making use of this edge locations now what are these edge locations so this edge locations is basically your caching uh, locations where your content will be cached all right so we'll have an origin server where the original data will be available and then we'll have these edge locations available all over the world where we can cache our data now this will reduce the latency which is experienced by the end user so the end users, instead of hitting the origin server always to access the data, they can make use of these edge locations to quickly access the data, which reduces the latency for your end user. So as the content is served from the nearest edge location rather than the original server. So instead of going to the original server, the users can get the data from the cache locations, which is your edge location. So that's how your CloudFront improves the performance of your applications or your websites the next question we have is what is the purpose of an origin in cloudfront so origin is a very important component that we have for your cloudfront so this origin it acts as a source of your content so any data any content that you want to deliver you will need to place this in a origins location the original server all right and then you will have your edge locations now this origin, it can be your S3 bucket, it can be your EC2 instance, or it can be any HTTP server. So you can have your data available in an EC2 instance, and we can use that as your origin server or an S3 bucket or any HTTP server. So this will be your uh, source, the original data, and then we'll have lots of edge locations where this data will be stored in the form of a cache. The next question we have is how does CloudFront handle the security and encryption of your data? So CloudFront supports your HTTPS by default and this allows you to encrypt your data in transit. So uh, the URL that gets generated, it has your HTTPS. So by default, your data gets encrypted when it is in transit. We can also configure to use SSL and TLS certificates to uh, communicate with the origin and provide a secure connection to end users. So essentially, we can make use of your HTTPS, SSL or TLS to um, uh, provide encryption of your data and also secure the connections between your end users. Next question we have is what is the significance of a distribution in CloudFront? 
so distribution this is where we can define the settings for your content delivery and also the cache behavior so what data you want to cache um, all that settings can be defined in your distribution so this represents the cloudfront configuration that can be applied to a set of content so whenever you are creating your uh, CloudFront distribution. So you will define your origin, you will define your cache behavior, uh, you can also define your settings, your security. So all these together makes up for your distribution. So we can use this to uh, define the settings, your cache behaviors and other uh, settings for your CloudFront distribution. The next question we have is can CloudFront be used for both static and dynamic content? So yes, CloudFront supports both your static and dynamic content. So you can configure different cache behaviors to handle various content types. So, you know, um, you can uh, define that depending on the source, the origin that you are using. Your CloudFront supports both your uh, uh, static website or static content as well as your dynamic content. So we can, we can leverage CloudFront for that. The next question we have is what is TTL? In CloudFront and how does it impact the caching so TTL it stands for uh, uh, time to live and we can use this to define how long uh, the data should be stored in the edge location so basically how long the caches should be available in the edge location we can define that by making use of your TTLs now we know that your CloudFront makes use of this edge locations to uh, cache your data but you'll also need to specify how long the data should be cached, right? So for that, we can make use of your TTL. So again, when you're creating your distribution, you will have the option of uh, uh, specifying the uh, TTL. So for example, here, if you see, you can specify the minimum TTL, the maximum TTL default is 24 hours. So this is 86,400 seconds, which is 24 hours. So by default, every 24 hours, uh, the cache data will be deleted and the new data will be cached in this edge location. So you can define that by making use of your TTL. So short TTLs result in more frequent requests to the origin while longer TTLs reduce the load on the origin but may serve potentially outdated content. So you'll have to be a little careful uh, when you're defining this TTL. So based on uh, when you're updating the data or uh, how long you want this data to be cached you can define these details it is user defined so you can control uh, the way you want it but essentially that's what your ttl is next question we have is how does cloudfront integrate with aws waf so waf it stands for web application firewall so we can integrate your cloudfront with waf to protect against common web application attacks so you know if you want to protect your is if you have a web application any websites that you are running it is recommended that you integrate it with waf which allows you to protect your applications from any attacks over the internet so this integration allows you to create rules to filter and monitor your traffic your http traffic so here when you're creating the distribution you will have the option to uh, integrate your uh, CloudFront with WAF so you can enable security protections and you can define your rules as well but remember this will uh, uh, cost you you'll have to pay money for this and uh, this is essentially a very useful option you have if, if you have any web applications that you're going to host uh, using this CloudFront so that's how you can integrate your CloudFront and your WAF service the next question we have is what is the benefit of using signed urls or signed cookies in cloudfront so signed urls or signed cookies uh, can be used to control access to any private content so if you have any data which is private and if you want to control access to that private data we can make use of your signed urls and signed cookies so this uh, provides us with a way to grant temporary time limited access to specific users which helps you to improve the security of your data the overall security of your content um, can be enhanced by making use of your signed urls and signed cookies so again when you are creating this distribution you have the option of uh, uh, specifying whether you want to have the um, signed cookie or signed uh, um, uh, urls or not by default you don't have it let me just find that option mm. 
okay so here you can see restrict viewer access so if you restrict viewer access viewers can must use cloudfront signed urls or signed cookies to access your content so you can use this to control your access to your private data so only certain users can access that particular data for you the next question we have is uh, can cloudfront be used with other aws services and if so how so can we integrate cloudfront service with other services so yes we can integrate your cloudfront with uh, other services seamlessly so we can integrate cloudfront with s3 buckets ec2 instances uh, lambda functions and many more uh, services so this integration allows you to accelerate and secure your content delivery for a wide range of applications so again when you are creating this distribution so if you want to integrate your lambda so here you have this function associations where you can define your uh, lambda functions if you have created and likewise if you see here we should be able to see your s3 integration uh, load balancer integration so there are different different integrations that can be done with your cloudfront service so uh, it allows integration with um, many other services in aws so that's about the 10 common questions that uh, we have that you can expect as, as part of your uh, uh, cloudfront uh, service so that's that's all i have uh, that's your quick journey through some common uh, AWS CloudFront interview questions that you can expect. Now, remember understanding these concepts is not just about interviews. It's also about mastering the services that can help you elevate your projects. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more AWS content and hit the bell to stay updated. Uh, if you have any specific AWS topics that you would like me to cover, uh, just drop your suggestions in the comments. Until next time, happy um, cloud computing.